Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Andrew. Today I am doing something that's really fun and <laughs> I'm not sure how this is all gonna like come together in the end, but I really hope it does because I just wanted to kind of talk through my favorite booktubers, favorite series. Just to kind of explain my history here. So obviously we're talking about Emma Books. She is basically the reason that I actually picked up books and actually started reading them. So just to give you some little bit of history, I, <laughs> I never read books until 2020. I didn't read at all. And in school when we were supposed to read, I would read cliff notes and just make my way through class like that. So I, I didn't read, I didn't read. But then Emma, <laughs> I have been watching booktube for years, for years. I, but basically when Emma posted this lovely video of how to read the Shadowhunter Chronicles, which if you are interested in the Shadowhunter Chronicles, she, she's laid it all out for you. It's all there, it's available. And maybe you'll, maybe you'll watch that and you'll, you know, become like us here, the readers that are just so, but basically to sort of pay it back, if you will, I genuinely just want to promote her channel. Like, I think that she's so well-spoken. I think that like, and mostly she is the reason that I actually discovered that I can read books and enjoy them. Who would have thought? So I just, I just owe her so much. And if you haven't checked out her videos, I think you should. So here I want to discuss her favorite series and if they are also something that I enjoyed. I have been working on this for a while. Well, I've just always been watching her videos and I've just kind of ended up here to where it's easy for me to talk about all of her favorite series. I plan on doing this with so many other booktubers. Just I have lists upon lists to discuss and go through on my channel and it's just going to take forever to get through said list. But here we are, we're going to make this one today. So this is her most recent all time favorite book series list. I have read at least the first book in every single one of these series. So I'm just going to talk through my opinions on them and whether I hold them in this high esteem as she does or not. So I will also leave the link for the video for yourself to go check out if you would like, as well as the Shadowhunter reading order. Alrighty, now let's start talking about some of my all-time favorite series. Now there is no real order to this. I'm not like ranking my favorite series, but definitely as we get closer to the end of the video, we'll be talking about my absolute favorites. First up, I have Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson, and this is a young adult mystery trilogy that takes place in a dual timeline between 1937 and present day Vermont. So I do own this entire trilogy as well, and I love all three of these books and I know that like they all end on cliffhangers as Emma will tell you in this video as well but I do I love Stevie the main character for sure and it's been a while since I've read all of these but I specifically remember I listened to all three of these audiobooks and I was driving like three hours because I was helping out another thing for my job I had to drive three hours to get to that and I was listening to these the whole time and I was like can I just drive to this place every day so I can just keep listening to this story because I thoroughly enjoyed all three of these books and I think it has a great conclusion and this I need to read more books like this because I and I it's not flawless like all four all three books were like four stars for me I haven't read the fourth book yet but I want to but I do think this is a great series and I think that I would also just like to point out that I don't read a whole lot of like mystery thriller stuff so if you read a lot of it you might not enjoy this as much but I just think this is fun I think mostly because of the school setting and the school is kind of its own character in a way and I just think that and all the characters it's very like the characters have their they all have like it's an eclectic boarding school and they all just have like their quirks if you will and they're just fun and there's kind of like a bit of a romance but I don't think it's too extensive so I think this is a great series I think that I liked it I like the series I don't know if it's an all-time favorite series but I liked it and I want to continue on and keep reading other books in the series so those are my thoughts on this series. Next up on my list of all-time favorite series is the Shadow Game Trilogy by Amanda Foody. So this is the, yeah, she just said Shadow Game Trilogy. This is the first series where I don't agree. I did read the first book on audio and I don't really know how to critique this. Like I just don't, I can't pinpoint why it didn't work for me exactly because I think, <laughs> I think it's just interesting to know. Like it seems like a lot of the stories that Emma enjoys have like a real spunky, kind of heroine type character and I usually enjoy that too in fact the first like 20 to 30 percent of this book I was here for it I was like oh she's like this 
rebellious girl who's like gonna, she has to go on this journey to find her mother who she thinks is like harmed at the beginning of the book basically. And then she kind of meets this villain. And I just, I felt like the villain didn't have a whole lot of depth. So, and then this is kind of like maybe put me off from Amanda Foody books. I don't know if I really want to read any of her other stuff. I know she she just came out with that All of Us Villains book. And I'm, I don't know. I just, I just something about, I think it was just the, and I mean, it, it just seems like I should have liked, but I didn't. And I just, I'm bad at saying why because I think the main thing is that I just didn't super connect with the characters and that they just didn't have, like they just didn't feel, they didn't feel super developed. I think the plot, it all, I don't know, it just felt like it was like not a fully completed, fully imagined book. It felt like it was written, it was kind of rushed, I guess. And I just didn't, I just didn't enjoy it. But that's one of Emma's all time favorites. So if you think that you and her have similar tastes, you should check it out. But, so this is definitely not an all time favorite for me, but, and like, I don't know who I'd recommend this to because I just, I haven't read enough to like tell you like, oh, maybe this thing, people, I mean, this is constantly compared to Six of Crows, which I didn't love Six, Six of Crows. So maybe, and I, I've said this, cause there's kind of a heist. I think there's a heist. I honestly don't remember. And I honestly, like put the book out of my mind. So, but it's just not, it's just not one that connected with me basically. So this was a miss. Don't worry though. Like there's so few misses in this video. I love Amanda Foodie's books. I think she's an incredible author and just deserves more hype. So if you love fantasy and young adult books, I highly recommend checking out the Shadow Game series. Next up on my list of favorite series of all time, we have Serpent and Dove by Shelby Mahurian. And this is a trilogy where the last book is coming out this year, but I've read the first two books in the series and I just can't imagine this not being a favorite fantasy series of mine. Okay, so I just said there's a few misses in this video. So this is <laughs> another miss for me. So, and I feel like this is, I feel like I've seen more love for Ace of Shades than I have for Serpent. Like I feel like Serpent of Dove is so mixed in its opinions and I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. I actually think I would say I enjoyed Serpent and Dove more than Ace of Shades, but Serpent and Dove, it just didn't have, like I remember more of what happened in it than Ace of Shades, but it's such a, it's a very plot driven book, which I would have said a year ago, like plot is my number one important thing, but but I'm slowly learning that I just, I need it all. I'm selfish. I need you to have good plot and writing and characters in order for me to, and to be in a connect with your characters. That all besides the point. So this book is just not, I didn't find it like gripping. I mean, it definitely has like this weird conflict as to why these, so these two characters are kind of forced to get married. And like, to me, that wasn't, it was, it was, what's the word I'm looking for? I was gonna say extravagant, but I'm not trying to say extravagant. I'm trying to say, I don't know. Like these, they were just forced into a situation and there's like a very specific scene that Cindy talks about. Honestly, I kind of agree with a lot of what Cindy said, although I think she gave it one star and I gave it like 2.5. So I didn't hate it on the level that she hated it. I didn't hate it at all, actually. I just kind of felt very, this was okay. So it was like, it was just so in the middle for me. Like, and I, so I'm not gonna continue the series. I see the appeal more so on this one than Ace of Shades though. Like, I just, again, we have that spunky heroine who's just like full of sarcasm and just witty. And I did like her friend. Her friend was interesting. I liked their friendship and I liked the romance, but I just didn't like it enough to want to keep reading. So, but don't worry, this is literally the, that's every other series. Let's, let's talk about it, okay? This one, I still would recommend. I would recommend this one more than Ace of Shades, but, but yet I feel like I've seen more people hate on Ace of, or hate on Serpent and Dove than Ace of Shades. So I don't know. I don't know what's reviewing books. <laughs> I don't know. If you love YA fantasy, like I know that some people don't love Serpent and Dove, but for me, it's just like a no brainer that this book is an amazing series. So I highly recommend you pick it up. Switching it up from all the YA I've been talking about, I have a middle grade series that I just adore to my core, and that is Nevermore by Jessica Towsend. This is a middle grade fantasy series that the first three books are currently out, but it is set to be a nine book series. So I am very, very excited to spend the next few years just waiting for each installment and kind of watching Morrigan grow up. Okay, so then we've got Nevermore. And let me tell you, these editions that she has, I now have the second and third in that edition. So obviously I enjoyed it, but the, and I was trying to get the first one, but it's like now the first hardcover, it's like the UK hardcover, it's impossible. It's impossible to get it. Like, it's not impossible. It's just so expensive. It's like 65 or $70. I'm not gonna pay that much money for one book. When, you know how many books you could buy with like 70 bucks? 
But Nevermore is a series that I have read all three books and I really, really enjoyed it. And I especially liked the third book. The third book is probably my favorite that I read, but I also really enjoyed the first book and the second book. I would probably say like, I don't know, the first and the third are so tied for me, but like I enjoyed the third one the most, then probably the first book, then the second book, but I genuinely enjoyed all three of them, like more than any, not more than anything else I read, but definitely enjoyed them more than a lot of other stuff I read. But yeah, and I definitely agree with the audiobook sentiment. Like all of the audiobooks are great. I would actually was reading this like if I had the physical book with me I would physically read it and listen to the audiobook and it's just so whimsical and magical and about this girl Morgan who gets whisked away to this magical land of Nevermore and there's like just this overlooming threat <laughs> throughout all the all three books but something happens in the third book that is one of my favorite like tropes in storytelling and just oh it was so good it was so good and i definitely i mean i would i might reread all three before the fourth book comes out because they're just middle grade and they're fun and i love them i just i just love them and there's just 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 so much wonder in all the books and i really enjoy them so i would highly recommend this series i don't know what else to say so let's go to the next one also the audiobooks of this series are fantastic the narrator does so many different voices and just really brings a story to life so if you love audiobooks like nevermore is one to pick up next up on my list of all-time favorite series we have the arc of a scythe trilogy by neil schusterman now everyone like everyone in my comments is like emma when are you gonna read the toll and i don't know so I also have, you can see back here, I've got all three of the books here and this could have been, it really could have been, I could have had this be an all-time favorite, like the whole series could have been an all-time favorite for me as well. Cause I mean, this could have been an all-time favorite for me, but the third book, which she goes on to say she has not completed, I, I have completed the third book and it was three stars and I, it's, such a painful three stars because it just didn't live up to the first two like at all like at all like this was like this was four stars book two was like 4.5 like so close being five like i just i could have given it a five and not felt weird about it but it was just i just it was so good book two was amazing and book three the last 20 percent of book three was great it was well it was good it was a little bit a little bit better than good but the first 70 to 80% of the toll was such a letdown. Like I wouldn't consider this an all-time favorite series at all because of that. Like, and she is considering an all-time favorite just off of her experience with the first two, which is totally fine and totally valid. I just, I, I can't do that. I, and but it, it doesn't, but like, does it make me retroactively dislike the first two? I don't think so. I still love the first two. The second book was in my top 10 reads of 2021. Like it was so good. It was so good. And the first two, you know, maybe I'll, so like maybe I'll, unhaul the third one but I don't know because I would consider rereading all three again and just reevaluating all my opinions maybe would I I don't know I love like the philosophical like questions of just what's going on here in this series because what's happening is you have people who you have the whole world like is cured de cured of death there's no death no more death no one's dying like no one but then they're like okay well how do we manage this so they have all these different sides who like have different methods of determining how they kill people and there's this like whole council that talks about like what they should or shouldn't do like it was so good and the first two were so good and i know how i would have rewritten the third book <laughs> like i'm not an author i'm not a writer i don't know but i just know and i'm in the middle of a series that isn't on this list and it won't be discussed in this video but i feel like what Neil Schusterman tried to do in the third book could have been executed in a way that to me is so obvious. Maybe I'll do a spoiler filled discussion of this series if I have enough people asking me to do that. That's fine. I can do it just because I'm saying a lot of things, but I don't want to spoil anything in this video. But yeah, this was so close. This was so, the first two are still very good, but it's hard to say I recommend the whole series. But I mean, on Goodreads, like so many people gave the third book five stars, so many people. So I, I don't know. So, but the first two were absolute hit, absolute hit, 100%. This next series, she's not the person who convinced me to read it, but she definitely played a part in me picking it up. So, but let's just. Next up on my list of all time favorite series, we have The Diviners by Libba Bray. And this is a four book young adult supernatural paranormal series that is set in 1920s New York City. So 
maybe I talk about this series too much, but I don't care. I, I don't care. It's my, at this point in time, it is my number one favorite series of all time. And here's the thing. As I said earlier briefly, I need good plot and writing and characters. And the plot in here I find so fascinating. The characters I find so fascinating. And the writing I find absolutely phenomenal. Like the quotes in these books are just speechless. I literally just left speechless. And here's the thing. Like there's actually been a lot of people I've seen briefly mentioned this in other videos that publishing is like really harping on authors to like release one book every single year. But The Diviners took 10 years. Four books took 10 years to write. And I would just like to <laughs> state to the world of my 100 people that watch me not even platform, I would just like to state that when you give your author time to develop things and have five to six years or three to four years between your books, this, this is, this is what you get. This is what you get. And it's stunning. I, I think that this is some of the best young adult that you could read. I, ju I, ju I, 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 <laughs> I think this is this is my favorite series. So like, and I know people don't like it. I know there's people who don't like it and they find the characters annoying or they find the main character just gets herself into so much trouble. And like, what does that even mean? Because it's a book and you're reading a book and I when I hear someone say, oh, she was so annoying because she made such stupid decisions. I'm like, oh, so the plot moved along. So they did things. So they went there and they took care of things and things got done and there was a plot. Like, I don't understand that. When people say, oh, the main character was so stupid. I'm just like, yeah, like she went in the room and she did the thing and like did the thing that like was so dumb and maybe wouldn't but like would there have been a story if she didn't like I'm here to read the story like of what happens when you do the dumb shit but I don't think any of these characters are dumb I think they are all are any of them dumb no I mean they talk about they literally are quoting like Frederick Nietzsche who like wrote philosophical books so like it's just it's so my taste so this is this is my this is everything I could ever want in a book. So if you don't like philosophical, moral questioning kind of stuff, then I guess this won't be for you, but in the paranormal stuff in here, I could just go on and on and on. I have a full spoiler filled review for the first two books on my channel with more thoughts already done. So I will also link those below, but this was an absolute, this was a home run. This was 10 home runs in a row. Mm, it was so good. It was so good. And I still gave the fourth book five stars, people. I need to do a review for the last two books, I know. But this is so underrated. It's so underrated. Like it only has 100,000 ratings on Goodreads, which is nothing. That's nothing. It's talked about on BookTube all the time. But in the, in the outer scopes of the world, like this is, you know what? If you like the show, American Horror Story. If you enjoy the show, American Horror Story, it's right here. It's in a book, right? It's in a book right here for you. It's right. It's a, here. It's here. It's, it's right here. If you like American Horror Story or the show Supernatural, like you have to read this. But I think it's more like American Horror Story because it's like very American. Like the story is very American. Like what happened in America in the 20s, all about prohibition. It's very American. I'm ranting. I'm sorry. But like Evie O'Neill and Memphis Campbell and Theta Knight and just so just these care please read it like please read it it and if you don't like it just don't tell me just don't tell me this is this is like that feeling I get it. people are always like sorry if I attack your favorites and I'm just like who would these are all these are all my precious <laughs> okay so you're not you're allowed to not like my favorites but this is, and again, yeah, the audiobooks, so good. I read, just, I need to stop because it's been so long. I think I've talked about this more than any other series, but like, obviously it's my number one favorite and I want, like, I just feel like I just need, I'm going to say one more thing, okay, which I didn't say in my best books. I'm just going to say this too. Like Emma goes on to tell you, there's a black main character, a Jewish main character. There's a disabled main character. There's an asexual character. There's a gay character. Like, but the representation isn't, the story itself is so good. Like, it's just. They're, it's just in the story and it's discussed in the story, but not in a way that overtakes the rest of the story. Like it's not, that's not what the story is about. The story is about these characters and their journey and their friendships and just the horror of what's going on. 
like these is, these are horror books like there's a ghost killing people and making sounds that sound like the souls in hell so i just want to preface that and let you know that's what you're signing up for and it's i need to read more horror on audio because it just translates so well to audio for real but i just i want to just read something from the author's note that's one of my favorite quotes and it just this solidified for me that like authorial intent and why we write what we write and why an author like I just now I think about it so much more I think so much more about why did this person decide to tell this story about these characters why and one of the things in Miss Bray's note here at the end, she says, often the monsters we create in our imagination are not nearly as frightening as the monstrous acts perpetrated by ordinary human beings in the aim of one cause or another. I will never stop talking about this series. So if you don't like this book, don't, you probably just don't wanna be on my channel. And that's fine, that's fine, that's okay. But I will never stop talking about this series. Like I can't imagine, I just can't imagine not valuing these characters. So now that I've talked about that for 10 years, let's see what she has next. It's a fabulous, fabulous series with breathtaking writing, amazing lovable characters that will just secure a permanent place in your heart, a lot of like deep, dark magic for those of us who are fantasy lovers, and it is just an all-time favorite of mine. I cannot recommend it enough. If you have not picked up The Diviners yet, this is your call to do so. Next up, we have another classic Emma Books favorite, and that is the Renegades Trilogy by Marissa Meyer. Oh my gosh, like how do I describe Renegades? It has been a minute. <laughs> I thought that we didn't have any more misses on this list, but I was wrong. So, well, well, let's, let's talk it through. So I read the first book and it was like a 3.5. So it was a higher rating than Ace of Shades and a higher rating than uh, Serpent and Dove. So like I definitely enjoyed it more than both of those by you know a whole star rating higher and I definitely enjoyed what Marissa Meyer is trying to do here in this series which is you know talking about superheroes and supervillains and it's fun and what she does and what she sets up is fun and it's fun to read and I read it very quick. I think I finished it in like three days maybe so like I just don't really feel like anything in the book is like new or something that we haven't seen before and I don't think it's super the characters this is where I'm like the I do prefer like standout characters I guess like some of my favorites some of, and that's funny to me because my favorites of the year were really strong characters and really strong writing and the plot was kind of what was missing which I would have said last year that my favorite thing was plot so but and I do think that Renegades has a constantly moving plot and it has lots of action scenes and it's it is kind of similar to like watching a superhero movie so if you like superhero movies I think you would also like this book, but it is it is flipping some things on its head. So I definitely, definitely recommend this. Like I think this has one of the higher ratings too overall. Like I think this is a very well received series overall. But I mean like, and I feel that I'm actually watching, I was literally today watching some Marvel movies and I'm like, yeah, okay, they've blown something up like 12 times, but like, what are they thinking about? So, you know, and like my favorite parts of this book were like, there's a series, there's like a section of the book with like the council, there's like a whole library scene and like some stuff goes it's just and then like the discussion of what occurred at the scene I enjoyed and then a discussion between your two main characters somewhat towards the end that are it's just kind of about like the discussion around like what's right and wrong like I that I enjoyed like those aspects I enjoyed and I feel like I just kind of wanted more of that and less action I guess because maybe I'm just not that I don't know but I did enjoy this and I want to read like the other two books and because I know people say like Arch Enemies is like really good. It's one of her best. So I want to read it, but you know, and I have a whole, I have a little bit more details in my, on my Goodreads review for it if you want to check that out. But yes, so there's that. Again, like all of these, if you have not read Renegades yet, I definitely recommend picking it up. Next up, I have a series that this list would not be complete without, and that is Harry Potter by JK Rowling. <laughs> I forgot that we were going to have to discuss this in this video, but I do want to mention briefly in a video my thoughts because I've never talked about Harry Potter on my channel, which I would be shocked if you'd never heard of it, but I did read the books growing up and I did watch all the movies and I have seen all the movies like 12 times and I have 
so many memories around those movies that are so positive and wonderful. And like, if J.K. Rowling hadn't been what she's been doing, what she's been doing, like this would be my number one because I haven't read a lot of other stuff because I didn't read until 2020. Like, so I just <laughs> and I I completely feel like J.K. Rowling is like incorrect in what I have seen and what I have read of what she's had to say about the trans community. And as someone who is part of the LGBT community, I'm the G in LGBT plus and. <laughs> Like I, like, I feel like so many people have utilized this series to gain popularity on their booktube channels. And I'm sort of now in a position where I can't do that because we can't discuss it. And it, like, it, I agree with Emma that it feels, for me, it feels fake to just never talk about Harry Potter when it was like such a huge part of my life, like a massive part of my life. And to just never discuss it feels just, just fake. It just feels fake. But at the same time, I don't want to hurt any trans person. So if you are trans or part of the LGBT, like I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. If you do want to see any videos on the series or don't, or how you engage with the series, like I'm open to hearing it all. But as far as my thoughts on the books, they're so good. They have, they have mountains and mountains and mountains of nostalgia for me personally. So that's all we're gonna say for now. If you wanna hear more, you know, you can follow me on Instagram, you can message me on Instagram, you can message me like I am available, like that's fine. So, but I just don't wanna be promoting a problematic author, whatever. I hate having to talk about this. Like I have mentioned Harry Potter in so many videos and I just cut it out. Like I literally just edit it out of the video, but I wanna just, I just wanna at least keep in here, I just want to say that, yes, I loved the series at one point in my life and it would literally be number one. Like, but I haven't read that many series. So like, I want to find things to push it off the list. That's what I want to find, but whew, nostalgia. She's powerful. She's a powerful witch. I'm tired. And so finishing off my list of my all-time favorite series, I decided to combine a few of my all-time favorite series to the one main spot. And that is the Shadowhunter Chronicles by Cassandra Clare. It is just not fair to give them four individual spots on this list. We all know Sandra Clare is my favorite author of all time. The Royal Instruments is my favorite series of all time. This is just a fact. If you have not heard of the Shadowhunter Chronicles before, you must be new here. Hi, I'm Emma. This is my reason for a living. So her number one is, I guess for right now, I would put it in my number two favorite because, and if we're gonna combine all of the Shadowhunter books as like one series, then I will give you my ranking as well. So I would, oh, my number one is difficult because I, number one is this cover, honey, this cover, she's beautiful. But my number one like series that she's written is probably The Dark Artifices because I love the characters and the plot the most. And like, even though the third book was like, I thought it was disappointing at the time, but then I've read so many other books since then. And like Queen of Air and Darkness is still a pretty great book. Like it's definitely not my favorite in the series. Like Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows are so, so, so good. Like they're phenomenal. And I think that I have a whole unboxing BTW of these special editions, but just, Ooh, so this is the fairy loot editions of the Dark Artifices, but I, so I would say the Dark Artifices, and then I would actually say the Mortal Instruments, and then I would say the Infernal Devices, and then I would say the Last Hours, but I haven't read Chain of Iron yet, so I don't know if maybe, but I, Chain of Iron, like I definitely, Clockwork Angel is one of my favorite Shadowhunter books. Like I like Clockwork Angel the most out of all the Infernal Devices books, which is not a popular opinion, but yeah, and I have a whole, I have a whole video that like goes into like, I think I had read everything I don't know, it's the first video on my channel too. I don't know how many of the books I had read at that point, but yeah, I, so yeah, The Dark Artifices, then The Mortal Instruments, but also The Mortal Instruments is like so close to being tied with The Dark Artifices, but, and then The Infernal Devices and then The Last Hours. So, and if I read Chain of Iron, I just don't see Chain of Iron knocking out The Infernal Devices unless the final book is like so good. I, I don't know, but I love these books. I love these stories. I love these characters. I love the way she connects everything in the world. I love so, I need to read Chain of Iron. Like, it's just, I don't understand why I haven't. Like, I'm definitely gonna read it before Chain of Thorns comes out easily for sure. I know I will, but these are so good. And I saw a review that I feel like sums these up so well if you are somehow haven't read these, but somebody described the Mortal Instruments series. Like the first book they said, it's kind of like a mashup of Buffy the Vampire meets Harry Potter meets Star Wars. And like, yes, yes. Like that is such a good way 
to describe it. So, and I love like all those things. So, and I love this series, but I specifically picked this series up because of Emma. So I owe her all of my reading. I don't read everything because of her, but I clearly, as you can tell from this video, enjoy most of her recommendations. So I will continue to watch all her videos. I'm so excited every time she posts a video and yes. So I would love to hear if you've read any of these series, what are your thoughts on said series? And what are your favorite series that are not mentioned here? And if you have a favorite series video on your channel, get, I, I need it. I need to see it. Can't wait to see it. Let me know your thoughts on just any of them, any of them, but also tell me your favorite series. Like that's, please tell me your favorite series. Like I am on a hunt to find my personal favorite series and make an all time favorites list. I'm just always working at that though. Like I'm constantly working on that list. I feel like we all are because like, there's just nothing better than like a series in which you can just disappear from reality. Like what's better than that? And as I said, I will also leave my Instagram, Goodreads and Twitter all in the description as well for you to check out if you like. Have a great day. Bye.